We have had some technical problems. Problem, problem. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero! Hi guys, how you doing? Welcome to PTZ Optics Back to Basics. We're back with you today and happy about it. Back to Basics, we go over basic live streaming and video production ideas and techniques, things that you should really know out there in the industry. So today we're talking about the new tech guidelines. They have published a guideline uh, PDF that tells you how to select a network switch, specifically a gigabit ethernet network switch for your IP-based video productions. So we're gonna go over that today. Now a gigabit switch, the TP link shown above, is a gigabit of data available on all the different ports that could be on your network switch, meaning you could have 16, 32, sometimes even more devices all connected on what's called a local area network. We're gonna give you the guidelines on how to choose the right switch for IP-based video production. Now, uh, you may have just purchased a PTZ Optics NDI camera. In fact, right here is one of the first times I've seen the PTZ Optics NDI Z cams. And Tess actually has one installed over here. We're going to show you in just a moment. Um, but it could be a Z cam. It could be a PTZ ND NDI camera. Whatever camera you have, you need to make sure you've thought about the network switch you're plugging it into. NDI cameras are really ideal for remote cameras because you only need to plug in one Ethernet cable for power if you're using a power over Ethernet switch for video and camera control and you can actually send audio over that signal as well. So it's a great way to simplify your video production and plop down cameras in places that you might not have been able to run SDI or other cables. Now finally, what we're going to talk about today is planning. We are going to plan out what the requirements for your network are and talk a little bit about setting up a static IP address and something you might not have heard of, a multicast address. So this is something that for me, I have to say, is a little bit cold waters, we're dipping our toes in, so we are going to strictly follow the new tech guidelines that have been released for selecting a network switch and hopefully this will help you find the ideal network switch for your video production. So Tess is going to use her new camera to say hello. Hello, hello, guys. We're going to take it over to one of the cameras that we were just talking about in our opening presentation. Paul touched on our static cameras, Z cams. The lens you're looking at me through now is actually our variable lens camera, which means it can be switched out to fit your preferences and needs. Now, this one hasn't been upgraded to NDI yet, I don't believe, but it can be, which is the great news. And we are also selling right now um, pre-installed NDI HX, let me be specific with that, cameras, static MPTZ. And it's important to note in this presentation that we're excited to bring to you today, all the information um, that is brought to you, most of it, should I say, is derived from the guide that New Tech has provided us with. And NDI and NDI HX is the property of New Tech. So thank you guys so much. We're happy to be partners with them. Let's get to it. All right. So uh, we got our presentation and we're going to dig right in. So network switch guidelines. So you've just purchased your first PTZ Optics NDI camera and you're wondering, where do we plug this in? Oops. What are we going to be, what, is, what network switch will ensure smooth performance and optimization? We've gotten that question quite a few times lately. So we thought it was time to research the information, make sure that we have all this good information to share with you guys. And that's what we're doing today. Yeah. So one of the first things our lead engineer wants you to know is that you, the switch itself must accommodate MDNS. MDNS is incredibly important and it must be there in your network switch for NDI to run smoothly. And ideally, if you'd like to accommodate multicast, you're going to need IGMP version three. So those are two things that you're just gonna wanna definitely have. Now, one of the base requirements, and one of the really the great things about NDI is you only need a gigabit switch. So you can pick up a gigabit switch for less than $100 on Amazon or B&H Photo or somewhere. But when you, do, when you do go and look for that NDI switch, you should probably think about um, 
wrong cue. Sorry about that. You should probably think about um, the throughput and the black the back plane plane required. So if you want that gigabit of data, a throughput back plane is your capacity. So your capacity is the number of ports times the speed times two. Now DHCP is usually recommended. And what DHCP does if your network switch or your router attached to your network switch has DHCP, it will automatically give certain, uh, cameras and other devices on your network IP addresses. Now you can statically set camera IP addresses. And I'll give you a quick tip if you're using a Mac or another camera, you can use the IR remote to just hit star pound four and on the screen, on the on screen display menu, it will tell you the camera's IP address that it's set to. And you can hit pound star four to automatically set the camera to DHCP. Now, generally, I recommend that you set a static IP address for the cameras. And we'll talk a little bit about setting static IP addresses and making sure that everything is organized so that you know how to connect to it, whether you're using vMix or OBS or TriCaster or Wirecast. You're going to want that unique static IP address that you can rely on and go back to from time to time. Now, optionally, your network switch may also want to support PoE, Power Over Ethernet. Now, PoE um, is something that you need to manage and think about because network switches usually have a maximum amount of wattage that they can supply to various devices. So just to give you an idea, PTZ Optics, NDI, PTZ cameras generally will take 15 watts. And the New Tech Connect Sparks, which also support PoE, are also in that 15 watt range. So note that PoE Plus um, supports PoE, but PoE does not support PoE Plus. And make a note of the power needed for your devices and your switch so everything matches up nicely. Now, it's supposed to be super easy, but there are a couple other things that we have to look at that we make sure it's enabled if we have a managed switch. Now, I think that, you know, I've tried to get this answer out of a lot of people. I've asked everyone, and no one will give me a straight answer of whether you should go with an unmanaged switch or a managed switch. So we're just going to follow these guidelines. No one has told me yes or no, one way or the other. But if you do have a managed switch, disable quality of service. You do not want that there. It's going to mess with you. Now, here's the thing. If you have a network that is like you already have a local area network in place at your university or business, you may want to consider setting up a separate local area network just for the NDI video production that you're running. Uh, because you, some places you can't disable quality of service because you need that. Now, disable jumbo frames is another thing that you want to do. That we definitely want to disable those jumbo dumbos in the framing section. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, I'm not gonna lie. Enable flow it's control <laughs> as asymmetrical of simply as on. Highlight enable, and that's one of those key points that Matt wanted us mm. to to bring up. Gotcha. So highlight enable. Where I don't even where do well, you see that? Well, the so many of these say oh, disable. Enable. Oh, I see. I just wanted to make sure that. You know, it was clear that enable. we're saying to enable. Got it. Um, oh, you're on the flow control. Enable flow control. I was talking about IGMP snooping. Okay. And then the last one there, yes. Sneaking on, ahead test. there. Snooping ahead. Um, enable IGMP snooping, which is incredibly important uh, if you're using multicast, MDNS. Now, I'm guessing that MDNS um, works with multicast. Um, and configure IGMP querier and query interval per switch in multi-switch networks while using multicast. Now, MDNS must be accessible. So one does not simply bypass the corporate network. This is my presentation today, guys. So it's going to be <laughs> a little silly. Who is that character? That's guy. That's from Lord of the Rings. Oh, yes. Yeah, I know. But who is he? Oh, Do you remember? Shoot. That's Aragorn. Oh, it's Aragorn. No, isn't Aragorn the um Yeah, that's not Aragorn. The king guy? Or am I wrong? Is it Aragorn? Come on. Somebody I know knows. the people in this Somebody chat knows. can clarify. It's Aragorn, son of Aragorn, true king oh, of Gondor. True king of Gondor. Of Gondor. Um What? Are you, are you not at <laughs> so MDNS must be accessible. <laughs> Manual discovery will require port 5960 for messaging and all incoming after 5961 for streams. Now you can check your port range and I, I actually do this every once in a while. 
Boromir. Yes. Oh, come here. Apparently. I didn't remember his name. Hi, Vigram. He uses the Netgear GS408 EPP PoE switch, and it's worked well. I actually use a TP link that works really well, but it doesn't have NDN MDNS. So I believe that it will work well, just not with multicast. But I could be wrong, and someone in the chat could, could comment on that. So cabling. This is something that just for anyone who's out there who's, who's getting new to this stuff, Cat5e is a minimum for cabling. It could be Cat6. It could be Cat7. I think there might even be Cat8. I'm not sure. But Cat5e, that E is important because regular Cat5 is only 10100, meaning 100 megabits as the maximum. But Cat5e does a full gigabit. So that's important. We had to rewire this whole office had Cat5. Mm. We had to pull them all out. Now, if you've got old Cat5, tie a new Cat6 to it, pull it through. Not going to be able to use it for IP video production. And finally, with VLANs, meaning a you know segmented portion of your local area network, uh, New Tech asks you to contact them directly for deployment of that. Now, Tess, why don't you cover this part of it? The picture? Yeah, why don't you cover the picture? All right, so this is just a funny little cartoon that only our people will understand. Hey, I'm watching a live stream. Can I call you back? <laughs> but, um, That's hilarious. I know who will appreciate oh, this is Tim Vandenberg because he de designed a t-shirt with a similar mentality of the banana yes. kayaking down the, the live stream. I get it. That's I funny. I you guys appreciate that. <laughs> That's funny. You guys are all watching a live stream, you nature geeks. So use DHCP to assign IP addresses or assign them manually. Those are the options there. Um, use manual configuration in NDI Access Manager to cross subnets. NDI Access Manager is not something we're going to go over in detail today, but I would like to in a future video, perhaps with our lead engineer, Matt Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you additional management control and segmentation, and it also allows you to cross subnets. Now, designate network location on okay, all NICs it. as well as work private. Hi, Drake. Drake's loving it. Hopefully, this is a refresher for a lot of you, but also, I think, some new stuff for me, I'm sure. Uh, connect and available gigabit plus network interfaces. Yes. So, your NIC card, your network interface card should be able to support, obviously, a gigabit of data. Now, network latency. So, full circle latency, meaning to and from, each device should be less than 14 milliseconds. And NDI 3.5 supports UDP for forward error correction for unicast. Uh, prior versions used TCP. So that's actually a huge upgrade that's going to help with a lot of NDI networks. Now, this is something just to generally understand. And for me, I actually thought it was a lot more. So I'm glad that New Tech released this. I always thought and was told on the internet probably by people who didn't know what they were talking about, that NDI was 100 megabits. That's what I always thought. Um, but um, this document is saying a little bit otherwise here. And perhaps the compression has been uh, improved. But what we're looking at here is 1080 at 60 seconds. This is NDI HX coming in at 16 megabits per second. Oh, maybe that's why. Um, I'm seeing megabits per second here and megabits per second here. I don't know if we're missing a part of a part of this, but NDI is NDI HX is much less than normal NDI here. So this is what I think. Yeah, okay. So this is making more sense. Sorry, 16 megabits per second is what you're gonna see from a PTZ Optics NDI camera. Um, the lowest I'm guessing is is three megabits, and then. Um, for NDI, and then this is 1080p at 25 to 30 seconds. You're looking in the 100 range. That's what I was told and known. And then once you get up to 4K, you can actually get up into the 200 and 300 megabits. And this is directly from that document that they shared with us. So if you think about it, if you are doing an NDI 4K, you could only do two or three 4K sources on a gigabit. So you might want to look at 10 gigabit after that. 
Finally, a uh, little couple more tips from NewTek. Confining your NDI workflows to a dedicated or uncontended network is highly recommended for management, reliability, troubleshooting purposes, especially if you're migrating to an IP workflow for the first time, which a lot of us are. And a lot of us are putting together our own dedicated networks, especially if we're bringing this equipment out on a live stream, whether we're going mobile or somewhere out there in the field, which we've done and uh, with great success. New tech professional services can help you achieve your ambitions regardless of scale or complexity. So you might want to reach out to them if you're having issues with that. Um, Paul is saying he's got two NDIs for two PC game streamers. Nice. Wow. We're using NDI right now uh, for different cameras, and we actually have a Twitch stream going right now, which is taking NDI feed from this system. Our Twitch stream is actually really cool right now. We should make this guide available somewhere. Yes, we should. Um, because I want you guys to be able to reaccess the links that we've displayed here. First, we have our own troubleshooting guide with the PTZ Optics NDI HX cameras that you can access on our downloads page. We also have a ubiquity network setting up setup guide. Excuse me, yes. is that also available on our downloads page? Um, that is, if if you're using ubiquity networks, which we which we do here, um, there's some additional configuration and advice that our lead engineer Matthew Davis has published, and it's actually available on our knowledge base, which is help.ptzoptics.com. Okay, you'll see the link for that there, and of course, you can always contact support or us, and we're happy to talk to you guys about this more. Yeah, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, we will see you on our Twitch stream, which is where we do our post show, which is twitch.tv. Is it twitch.tv? Mm -hmm. Twitch.tv slash sgeeks. And it's kind of a cool little layout because you will be able to see uh, you and control a behind the scenes NDI camera. So we'll see you there, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.